This is one thing that I think is really funny. That is the one thing about bins and baskets is that it's nice to know what's in there. No, 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 no. Okay, welcome back. Today I have a really special video for you. I am going to be talking about Jessica from How to HD. I am going to be talking about Jessica from How to HD. Home tour for her house. Jessica from How to a ADHD, her home tour. Oh, that was hard to say. And if you don't know Jess, she is an awesome advocate for people with ADHD. She has it herself and she has amazing videos on her channel. Absolutely love her channel. So I would totally check it out. And this in particular will be so good for people who want to relax at home, who are tired of feeling stressed, who want better focus. So let's dive in to her video. No, this is not an art gallery. Hello, brains. She had trouble starting her video too. <laughs> kind of obsessively been trying to make my home deliberately ADHD friendly, which means deliberately executive function friendly. Now you may have heard the term executive function before. If you have ADHD and you've had any kind of done any work with it, you would probably be familiar with that. But executive function is what steps you need to take to get things done. It's sort of like how you handle doing anything. Um, how you manage to get your bills paid, how you manage to make dinner. It sort of is just required for a lot of steps. So people with ADHD have a bit of an impaired executive function. So they need to simplify things as much as possible. I mean, most people could benefit from that. It just benefits people with ADHD so, so much more. There's a lot of stuff that I've learned, strategies that I've used. I've learned how to function in a neurotypical world, but in my own home, I can make my world ADHD friendly. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I love that she has done that. And I think that that is one of the greatest things that a person can do who has a neurodivergency, or if they're more sensitive, anything like me, focus problems because I've had concussions in the past. So she has made this home ADHD friendly. Instead of trying to fit in and cope with being in the rest of the world, which is so not designed for people with ADHD. It's basically a slow cooker that cooks faster. So it's really ADHD friendly. I forgot to make dinner. I don't know what I'm doing for dinner. I have a bunch of stuff. I can just throw it in a pot and like start it. And then I can go do other things. Like I can go do whatever else I need to do while dinner is cooking and I don't have to worry about burning my house down. And yes, the instant pot would be so helpful because I'm telling you, if you have something last minute, you can just throw stuff in there. The best thing? to frost chicken and other things in there in like seven minutes. Well, plus the heating time. The other thing I do is try to have everything at point of performance. You have everything that you need to perform a task within arm's reach of that task. I love the point of performance thing. So I'm a certified high performance coach and I help people with ADHD. And this is one of the best things is that you want to remove the barriers. And I love this. And this is what we have done in our own home because my husband has ADHD. Two of my kids do. Like I said, I have concussions and we do this too. I will show you our kitchen in a little bit, but I love how she did that. And she is illustrating very well. And then I'm like, oh, right. The fridge, I needed to take that chicken out because that's probably not good anymore. And so then, oh, great chicken. My dog probably needs to go outside. So now I'm taking my dog for a walk holding a coffee mug. Like if she has to move around and go to do different things, she's going to get distracted. And I don't know about you, but for me, I really have to try to keep myself on track if I can't stay working in the exact area where I'm doing. So I love this, the point of performance, exactly, exactly what you should do when you are setting up your home. And I will get into that in a little bit. You can choose exactly what temperature you want the water to get up to based on the tea you wanna make. It starts out blue if you're not doing anything with it. And then you start and it turns red. And when it's done, it turns green, which means it's done. The kettle, I have a better kettle. I love that you have a kettle that tells you by color if it's ready or not, which is so awesome, and that it steeps your tea. So this is our beverage station, and I love it too. It is a completely set up for point of performance as well, which you kind of should try to set your whole kitchen up to. But I have got our tea right here, coffee grinder, the coffee's there, and then mugs right here. So, and then I've got our fizzy water here glasses and things right there. So, and then we've got a frother there. This is the best because it is an on-demand hot water 
kettle. So we can have hot water all of the time. If this one holds three liters of hot water, you can even get them up to four. I will link it below. But what I love is there is hot water all day and we usually make most of the day, if both of us, my husband and I are here, with um, several cups of tea. The only thing is that you have to make sure you refill it when it gets down to the bottom. That's one thing where I could see some people with ADHD sort of struggling, but I love this. So I think I have her kettle beat. The basket helps me contain the clutter. If there's clutter on the counter, I can easily throw it in the basket. If there's too much clutter, then it probably needs to go in another basket, which means it needs to go upstairs. Baskets are a slippery slope, but I think she is using them correctly in this situation because what she is doing, and this is no different than me in the morning being like, hey, I'm gonna go around, pick up all the stuff and put it in a basket. I love what she is doing because what she actually is doing is using the baskets correctly. She is putting things in the basket, not to live there forever. Well, in this case, in the kitchen, she has the things that she wants to stay in there, like her pens. She has a granola bar in there, which I think was sort of like a I'm tidying up moment. And that's the thing about baskets like this. As long as you set aside the time just to like quickly go through it at some point, I think that's good. Now, the one she has on her stairs, I love that because then that is like, now I put this upstairs. And this is like what I did in my laundry room too, where I put the basket above my laundry area. I have my laundry here this basket is ready to go. If I'm walking around picking up clothes, I can just throw them here instead of like putting a pile somewhere else. And then it's right by the laundry station. If you are lucky enough to have an actual laundry room, then you can put it in the laundry room. I would suggest having like an actual like bin or basket though. So instead of like going upstairs a million times without bringing things up, she has the stuff in the basket. Now it may take a few times to get up there as a person with ADHD or a person with focus like me, like I will walk by stuff and be like, how the heck did I miss that? But one of the things I put in my basket is the time timer. This thing is amazing because it shows time visually. I can see how close I am to done. I can just glance across instead of waiting for a timer to go off, which is really nice. It's really important because time blindness is a big thing with people with ADHD. So if you do have timers to keep yourself on track, I love that. And I like the time timer, which I have also linked in my Amazon store. I love using timers and I usually use my phone, but the problem with the phone is that the phone can instantly distract you. Like you can't, it's so hard for me to pick up my phone and not then check my email, check Instagram, check all of these things. So it's really good to have like an analog timer. I love that. I like to have all of my options out in front of me where I can easily see it so that I'm more likely, not always, but I'm more likely to choose the right thing to cook with. I 100% get this with my husband in particular and one of my kids all the time they will just grab whatever is handy instead of looking for the proper tool so i love how she has things right there and you know she has a lot of things on her counter and you know i do like to put things away but i think for people with adhd if you have it out and if it makes it easier for you to keep track of things without like going overboard and overwhelming yourself with having a bunch of stuff out, then I think that's great. As long as you're keeping it tidy, like you have to do what works for you. I'm short. In order to not climb on countertops, I have a stool. It's this little thing and it tucks into a corner and I can drag it wherever I need to. And yes, I totally love that she uses a stool. Me too, my friend. I am five foot one. I kind of have a rule that other than nice knives and my nonstick pans, if it can't survive the dishwasher, I should not own it because I do not like washing things by hand. When I do wash things by hand, gloves. Okay, yes, I love this too, is that if she does not have, she does not have things that can't be washed in the dishwasher. If she has to wash things by hand, she uses gloves. I completely get that for the sensory thing. I, I am like that too. The sensory thing of like the water's too cold or it's too hot or things feel gross and slimy. It's enough of a barrier that it'll keep me from wanting to do the dishes. Like if there's a cold sink of water in particular, if something has been washed in it, it's really hard for me to reach in and drain it. Ew. Sensory things are big for me. So this carpet is really plush. It feels good to stand on. And I also don't like sitting on chairs or couches all the time. Sometimes I want to sit on the floor. So it's nice to sit on. In my office, I can't handle touching like plastic. I don't like the feeling of it or because this is obviously not leather. So 
I have a blanket on the seat so that I don't have to feel that. That's a sensory thing for me. So I 100% get that. And you have to work with your strengths. You have to work and you have to work with what you know about yourself. I don't always meditate. I forget to meditate and having a physical cue to meditate is really helpful. So it's not even necessarily that I always use the meditation cushion when I meditate, but it's, it's a reminder. One thing in particular for people with ADHD is they need visual cues. And so a lot of people like me who don't necessarily need visual cues, what we like family and spouses need to understand for the ADHD mind or other neurodivergent person who needs those visual cues is to understand that sometimes things do have to be left out for those visual cues. Otherwise it's just not going to happen. Like a note probably won't work. So Jessica has her meditation pillow because she may not use it to meditate, but it reminds her to meditate. So I do really think that that is an important piece to remember is not everybody can always have everything put away because sometimes we need stuff for visual cues. So that is something to remember. All the tech clutter goes in this bin. It's not organized at all. It's just in a bin. It's a pile, but it's a pile in a bin. So it looks organized. It's my best hack ever. So, okay. So this is one thing that I think is really funny. Um, so she has this bin with all of this tech stuff in there and she didn't even know she had a PS4 in the bottom. That is the one thing about bins and baskets is that it's nice to know what's in there. But like I said, we're working with our strengths and people with ADHD in particular, they can be so hard on themselves and they have some amazing superpowers like hyper-focus, like creativity, all of that. And she is a good example of this and she has her place set up to nurture those things. So as, as much as like a person would be like, hey, like you shouldn't have bins that you don't know what are in, that's a little unrealistic. She also just moved, so. This entire room is about things that inspire fascination so that my deliberate focus brain can rest and I can just chill. And that is exactly it. Like she has set up her home with things that she likes. And that is so important. And a lot of people, when they are decluttering, they're not recognizing how important it is to still have things you like. Like I have people all the time say to me like, like in my coaching group, they will be like, well, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I need to declutter this. And I'm like, but you like it. Like it's, it's, it's actually sentimental or it's something that you really enjoy. Like don't feel obligated to declutter all of the time. No, 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 no. I do have some organizational strategies that are left over from my old place that I still use. One is color-coded laundry baskets. I have a gray one for anything that can just be thrown in the wash and thrown in the dryer and I don't have to worry about. The pink one is things that need a little more care. This is a similar setup to what Jess has. This is our hamper and there are four sections. What I love about it, it really makes it easy to do laundry. This is for darks, this is for lights, this is for hand wash. And this is for towels because the longest, for the longest time, we did not have a spot for towels, but I really, really, we had one that was like a three parter before and it was like ripped. One of the kids like climbed out of their crib and ripped it when they were a baby. So I bought this one. I will link it also to the Amazon store, but I just think that this is just so handy and then you can just plop it. The only thing is I would say, my husband does tend to forget what they are, so I'm not sure if that would be a barrier. If you feel like that would be a barrier for you, maybe don't use that one, but I think it's super helpful. So this is another point of performance thing. I have a big fuzzy blanket right on my bed and then right here, my books that I wanna read. And this is what I have actually wanted to do. I am going to do this. She has a really comfy chair for reading and that is exactly what I have been wanting and maybe I'll put it over there. I. Love it because that encourages her to read more, which is awesome. She has like a comfy blanket ready to go. And chargers for anything that I need to charge. My phone charger, my watch. I learned to put my watch charger up here as well. So on her nightstand, she has her phone charger and her watch charger. And for me, I have started charging my phone down in my office. But the thing is, if you have ADHD, like this is something I've really learned in my house. Any sing any extra steps become a barrier. So like my husband, for example, he will like not have his watch charged because he doesn't have 
the watch near the charger or whatever. And that's just it, right? So yes, maybe it's ideal for a lot of us not to have our phone right next to our bed, but if it's not going to get charged, then that's not good either. So you have to make those decisions. So I love that she keeps her meds next to her bed so she can take them first thing in the morning. Like that is just the thing is to always be aware. What are the things that I may not get done if I have a barrier in the way, I love it. The Marie Kondo method of folding my clothes. It's really helpful because I used to have my clothes and dressers stacked like this and I would have to dig through to find the shirt that I wanted. A big part of ADHD organizing is being able to see what your options are. I have been doing the Marie Kondo method for probably three, maybe four years now of folding my clothes whenever her show was out because it, it does make it so easy to find your clothes. It makes it so easy to find your shirts, which I absolutely love. So. 100% recommend that too. And this is the thing about all of this is we have to recognize, like I said, like what are strengths, what are challenges? Check this video here. It is about ADHD. I think that you will like it. I really wanna thank Jess. She is amazing with what she does. I will link her channel below. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to my patrons. I will see you later, bye.